chilling tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. The following interactive performance is a first round entry in Chilling Tales for Dark Nights' fourth annual Evil Idol voice acting competition. And you, listener, get to help decide who advances to round two. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like this contestant to move forward or the thumbs down if you'd like to see them be eliminated. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Thank you, and good luck to all of our contestants. The day I found my first hole was the day my best friend came back from the dead. We were in high school, and stupid. Jake was his name. We liked to go out to this old abandoned house in the woods after school to screw around. It was a pretty big place, to be honest. It was a two-story house with a basement, or three stories if you counted the small attic above it. The story is supposed to go that an old woman was building the house years and years ago to get away from the city life. For some reason, she never finished it. Probably died. Anyway. The house was pretty close to completion when she stopped, but nobody bothered to finish it. Now it just sits there rotting away. So Jake and I would go to the house and just screw around, scaring each other or exploring the place. Whatever we felt like. Usually we were careful. Or lucky. But nothing ever happened to make us worry. Then the floorboards broke under Jake's feet when we were exploring the second floor and he fell. I never realized how bad the condition of the house must have been. Because when he hit the first floor, that broke too and he fell into the basement. I ran down and looked through the broken hole in the first floor. It was dark, but we usually had the foresight to bring flashlights. So I shined a light on him. And I'll never forget what I saw. One of those boards or something must have fallen at just the right angle when Jake hit the ground. It pierced right through his stomach like a spear. I could see him shift and try to grab at it, even hear him gurgle. And then he stopped. He was dead. I was sure of it. Our stupidity got him killed. I was in shock. I, I didn't know what to do. So I just ran. I ran out of the house and left him there. It was about evening when I got home and I went straight to my room. I didn't talk to anyone, didn't stop for anything. I just wanted to curl up and try to forget that scene. My parents tried to talk to me but I feigned sleep and they just went on. Later that night we got a call from Jake's parents asking where he was. They actually woke me up for that one. I just said I had no idea. The usual, well, if you see him please let us know came afterward and I just nodded before I went back to sleep. The next day, I had school, but I went through the morning ritual in a bit of a trance. I didn't want to go, but I couldn't stay home. I was pretty sure Jake's parents already suspected me of something, so I went. School was just like usual, people screwing around in the morning and talking. I went up to my normal group of friends that I hung out with before the first bell rang, my heart stopped. There was Jake. He stood there, just laughing and being his normal self. When he saw me, he looked over and grinned before coming over. He made a joke, but I didn't hear it. I just continued to stare. Hey, you okay? He asked, starting to get concerned. Aren't you... Are you okay? Was all I could muster back. Well, yeah, why wouldn't I be? He laughed a bit, but gave me a weird look. You, uh, you don't know anything? I tried to phrase it as delicately as possible. I didn't want anyone else to know, but I figured that was enough to clue him in. If it did, he didn't show it. Know anything of what? He responded, and then the bell rang. He said bye and gave me a weird look before heading off to class. I just stared off in shock. Why was my friend here? I saw him die. At the very least, he should be in the hospital, but he's fine. I went to class, but I couldn't concentrate. I just kept thinking about Jake and how he should be dead. I kept trying to think of how he could have survived, but I just couldn't fill in this hole of a mystery. After class, I decided to check out the house. Jake met me after school and asked if I still wanted to hang out. 
I told him I wasn't feeling well and we'd catch up tomorrow. He seemed to accept that and move on. It's not like I wasn't excited my friend was back, but looking at him made something in me cringe. He shouldn't be alive. He shouldn't be here. I, I saw him. So I went to the house that afternoon alone. When I walked in, I could feel something. It was strange, but familiar. It was the same feeling I got when I looked at Jake, that something wasn't right and it was just off. Over here, it felt like a lingering feeling, not this fresh, what the hell, I got when I saw my friend. I stepped forward and looked down. Sure enough, there was the damn hole he fell through. So I wasn't crazy. I slipped out my usual flashlight and shone it down the hole. There was the wreck I saw him land on. Just... No Jake. Did he get free? Did he magically regenerate or something? I showed my flashlight up to look toward the hole in the second floor, but it wasn't there. Something was wrong. Really wrong. I wandered back down in the first hole and peeked down into it. I'm sure that was the moment that solidified my fate. If I had just ignored it, moved on, and just been plain happy that my friend was back, I might have been able to continue life as usual. But at that moment, I saw something. Just a flash of something black. Blacker than the darkness beyond my flashlight's range shift and fly out of sight. I gasped and stumbled back, breathing heavily. I know I should have run, but my curiosity took hold. My logical side was saying that it was just some animal or a trick of the light. I didn't see that flash of black again, but I did notice something. The boards and wreckage underneath the hole were gone. Nobody can clean up a mess like that in the blink of an eye. I bolted. I ran out of that house through the forest, swearing up and down something was chasing me. Now I know it was simply watching me. For now. I ran home and slammed the door shut behind me then leapt into bed. I curled up and just laid there. It took me a while, but I finally drew myself out of bed. I had to figure out what was going on. But like hell was I going back to that damn house, especially if there was some monster in it. So, I did what any teenager would do. I went to the internet. It was slow and I didn't have a lot of luck at first. Looking up paranormal just got me weird pictures and stories. A friend comes back from the dead, got me a lot of zombie stuff. Missing time seemed to get me a little more info. A lot of it was around aliens, but a few stories seemed to pique my interest. Like something crazy seeming to happen, like a car crash or an accident. And suddenly there's a time jump and things seem to be okay. Like nothing ever happened. There was one post on a missing time board that seemed to draw my attention. However, it was titled Plot Holes. It was only posted a couple of days ago. I clicked it. Everyone seemed to speculate what caused the whole missing time thing. A lot of the blame was on aliens or dimensional whatever. This guy, however, acted like he knew for a fact. He started by telling a similar story. In a nutshell, his wife was killed in a household accident when part of their house caved in during a storm. While trying to get to her, he was knocked out by some debris. When he came to, he was sitting in the living room and his wife was trying to wake him up. The house was fine with no sign of disaster, and she was alive. He was ecstatic at first, but described a strange feeling, like he figured out something he wasn't supposed to, and that his wife shouldn't be there, just like the feeling I got with Jake. Over time, he couldn't be around her. It was just too strange. So he left. He went on the road, taking what money he had and doing weird little jobs here and there while staying in motels. While he went, he began to research. It took a long time, but he found others with similar experiences. Most of them just described it as a miracle and moved on. Others couldn't shake the feeling. All of them described the same sort of thing. A person would die or some landmark would be destroyed, only to have it miraculously come back later. While researching people who shouldn't be alive, he came across a book review. Apparently, it was the latest book in the series. In it, a side character saves the day by fighting off a bunch of enemies for the heroes. In the previous book by a different author, that character had been killed. So this character couldn't have come back to save the day, but if he didn't, the main character would have died. The reviewer said it was one of the worst plot holes he'd ever seen. That got the forum author and me thinking. He said he'd post again after he experimented a bit, 
and I didn't blame him. I had a few things I wanted to experiment with as well. Nevertheless, I dropped him a message saying I read his post and that something similar happened to me, then called it a night early. I had to be extremely alert if I was going to look for the signs I wanted to find. The next morning, I woke up and started my first attempt at looking for plot holes. Something seemed to click after reading that review. Someone should have died, but that was ignored so he could do something of significance later. It sounded so familiar. The first few days, I didn't notice anything, except for that weird feeling around Jake. Nobody else seemed to have it. The third day was when I noticed my first plot hole. It was the most minor of details, but it was there. One of the girls in my class went from wearing a skirt to a set of jeans between periods. I know how that seems to make me look, but I'll admit it. The skirt was why I noticed. But to change into a pair of jeans within seven minutes while walking across campus to another class? That doesn't make sense. I guess it was possible, but it didn't make sense. It was like a costume got wrong during a scene change. After that, it all went downhill. I kept seeing changes everywhere. A sign would be black in the morning but light green later at night. Or a friend would go from wearing a sweater to a t-shirt when I looked away for just a moment. You'd think people would notice these changes, but nobody did. Maybe it was that strange feeling I got after the accident with Jake. Or perhaps you just had to be looking for him. It was about a week and a half before I got a response back from the plot holes author. He introduced himself as Dennis and apologized for being late to respond. His reason why? He had gotten caught up in observing plot holes. He was noticing the same thing I was. This is the first time I've ever actually spoken to this guy, but the changes he describes matched mine to a T. Except for one thing. After noticing a misspelled sign above a store late at night, he turned away for a moment only to look back and see a shadowy figure floating by it. It was hazy like looking at the figure through a fog that just wasn't there. After the being floated away, the spelling error was gone. A shiver went down my spine. That seemed too close to whatever I might have glimpsed at the house. I hadn't seen it full on yet, but then now I knew what I was looking for. I wish I hadn't. It wasn't long before I began to see them too. You had to look at just the right moment I found out. When it seemed like nobody was watching or paying attention to that little error you just noticed, then you could make it out. A shadowy haze of a being seemingly dressed in a long black robe with a hood, messing with things until they change. I saw one fade my friend's t-shirt into a jacket shirt set on a cold day in class, and I saw another change an entire stack of books in the library to a completely different set before they were picked up by students. Nobody noticed them, just like the holes. It was like you had to be on the same wavelength to notice. I'd been conversing with Dennis a bit online and he agreed with that idea. It seemed like you had to notice one to start seeing the others. If you could just brush it off, then your life would go on. But if you were the curious sort, then you were like the two of us. You'd just keep seeing them all the time. I was starting to go crazy. I couldn't say anything to anyone and Jake kept bothering me about why we never hung out anymore. I just couldn't look at him. He wasn't natural, but I realized it wasn't him. It was those things that brought him back. Maybe he had some destiny or something, but I had no idea. Things took another turn when I was having a Skype conversation with Dennis. He told me one of his friends that was helping him look into this was gone. Nobody even seemed to remember his existence. When he went over to his friend's house, Dennis found it relatively neat, say, for a few items strewn about. But as he explored, the belongings that were out of place began to find themselves back in their positions. Dennis was sure that it was one of those creatures behind it. His suspicions were confirmed when he saw one putting back a book that had been thrown on the floor. It turned and looked at him. The two stared for a long time. The creature gazing at Dennis while he looked into a blank nothingness that was its face. And then... It left. It turned and seemed to float away right through one of the walls. That seemed to be the last thing out of place then. The house looked like nothing had ever happened to it. Dennis began to notice something else. There were no pictures or objects identifying an owner. Unless you were that much of a hermit, you had at least an old family picture, or maybe some mail with your name on it, but nothing. It was almost like no one had ever lived in this fully furnished house. 
I started putting the pieces together then. If these creatures could bring someone back from the dead, they could easily get rid of someone, right? This meant I was in danger. After that, I stopped. I was out. I ignored all Dennis's messages, and I tried to ignore all the holes I constantly noticed. And I did my best to ignore those shadow creatures whenever I caught them. I even tried to hang out with Jake again. But every time we hung out together, it was like I was looking at the face of a lie. And looking at him just made me think of those creatures. I imagined one pulling him up from that debris, slipping that board through and out of his body, and knitting up his wounds like nothing ever happened. I did my best to look past it all. Dennis was hard to ignore, however. He just kept tracking me down. I'd block him from my email and messengers, but he'd just make new accounts to talk to me and send me more. He seemed to be sending more and more as the days went on. Finally, one day I received an email from a new account that was clearly Dennis. I was about to delete it and block him again, but the subject chilled me to the bone. They're after me. Get on Skype, I need help. I didn't know what to do. If Dennis was in trouble from these things, then I had to help. I couldn't just leave him, but after him, they might turn their sights on me. I logged on to Skype and added it as a new account. I immediately got a video chat request. Dennis was in his apartment with the lights off, and he looked terrified. What's going on? I asked as I leaned in. Those things have been following me around. He spoke, his voice an exasperated whisper. Well, more and more of them just keep showing up. They're not just fixing holes, they're watching me. Are you sure? In response, he lifts up his laptop and carries it out to what looks to be the kitchen. He sets it down in front of a window and draws back the curtain. I couldn't make out anything at first, until he turned on the light. I'd only seen one of them at a time, maybe two if something was a big change, but there was at least three or four behind that window, just staring in with those empty hooded faces. He quickly flicked off the light and turned the laptop toward him. You see? I don't want to end up like Jerry, man. What should I do? I had no idea what to tell him. I didn't know what these things were. I didn't know what they wanted or how to stop them. I opened my mouth, but couldn't form the words that he needed to hear. As I stammered to find out what to say, I saw them slip in the background behind him, right through a wall with a cabinet. Dennis, behind you! He turned as the first approached. God, there were a bunch slipping in now. Three, then four, then five. He never stood a chance. The first reached forward with an inky arm and shoved it straight through his chest. There wasn't any blood, or even a sound save for Dennis's terrified screams. He began to writhe, grasping at his chest as the creature held him there, but I don't even know what. His spine, his heart, hell. It could have been his very soul for all I know. Then the others were on top of him. They fell onto him like a dark dog pile, consuming him in their dark presence. I couldn't scream, I... I couldn't even look away. I just watched as he faded from view. Ever so slowly they backed away. Dennis was gone. Erased. Nobody would even remember him. He was a hole that had to be filled in and taken care of. Then their attention turned to the computer. To me. My eyes widened as the realization hit me. I was another hole. A thorn that had to be plucked a part that drew attention to the inaccuracies of this world they were trying to design. And I had to be taken care of. I didn't even bother turning off the computer. I just stood and turned, only to find myself face to face with the horde of them in my own room. My back went to the desk as one shadowy shade glided to me. Its arm rose, and I could almost make out the tendrils of its foggy black cloak and the individual digits of its dark fingers. I couldn't move. I was frozen. And then, it struck. I didn't physically feel the hand shove into my chest. I felt it somewhere deeper, like it was grabbing an intimate part of my being. I felt violated and exposed, most of all completely terrified. I screamed as it began to squeeze. It hurt so fucking much. My vision blurred, but I could still see the others move around me. They filled in a circle around my body, 
regardless if there was something in their way or not. They just glided through it like it wasn't there. Black hit me from every side. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. I could feel that hand wrenching back, pulling something so personal to me away. My body felt limp then. I started to feel nothing. It inched along my limbs, slowly turning feelings of cold, pain, and terror into absolutely nothing, until it consumed my whole being. I was gone. I was dead. Or worse, I didn't exist anymore. Stretched out before me was nothing but darkness. I tried to call out into the void to claw my way forward, but I couldn't move a limb. More like I didn't have any limbs to move or a mouth to yell. I was just an essence, a leftover floating in an endless void. I'm still there, in pure nothingness. Can't move or I don't think I have anything left to move. It's gone. I'm sure Dennis is feeling the same things I am. I can almost imagine him too, floating in the same void. Maybe one day we'll meet. It keeps me sane that I might one day not be alone in here. But that's it. It's the end of my story. I wish I could say I fought back and saved myself. Or at least I was on the run. But some plots don't have happy endings. However, I'm sure I've left you wondering one final thing. If I'm dead, or erased, how could I have written this? Well, my friend, you just discovered your first plot hole. Be wary if you see any more. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Steve Taylor, reminding you that if you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or a thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout the month. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. Until next time, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark.